All right, another fun one here on Staten Island, 2010 Nissan Maxima. Customer complaint is it just stalls out when you know when you're driving it randomly, and it keeps blowing a fuse. Okay. Now which fuse? Let's see, where's the uh, fuse box car here? Just a sec. Yeah. All right, so the fuse that is blowing is the second one right here, the one I'm jumper it into it is the engine control 15 amp fuse now when dealing with intermittent short you know blown fuses we have to get a wiring diagram power distribution see what this fuse controls see what's on the circuit so let's do that right now all right so first thing we have to locate the number of the fuse because it just said engine control 15 amp so right here on BBB industries I dug up a picture of the integrated power distribution module, the IPDM, which holds these fuses. And the diagram here is very helpful. Uh, the fuse that's blowing is this guy right here. And according to this little picture, it's fuse 42, 15 amp. That guy right there. So now we need to figure out what is on this fuse, on fuse number 42. For that we go to power distribution diagrams, again, hunt around a little bit and find fuse 42. So again, this is in real time, it, you know, it took me about an hour to dig up all the information, do all the testing, but it's kind of an in interesting problem, so I got the video camera out. Anyways, there's 15 amp 42, it, can, you know, feeds the ECM relay. So control and power side, and then, let's see, once the ECM relay clicks on, that controls the, sends power to, through a diode, to an internal processor in this IPDM, and it just lists terminal numbers, 55, 69, 10, 49, and 53. Now, where do we go from there? Well, keep scrolling down to connectors and terminal numbers. We're looking for like, you know, terminal 10, like right there. And that is on connector E18 on the IPDM. Brown wire ECM VB. I don't know what that stands for, but we don't really care. All we care about is to find this wire and the wiring color. And the rest of the wires are on this F10 connector. So we can see there's uh, 69, 55, 53. I actually wrote them all down on a sheet of paper just so we know which wires we're attacking. Now that we know what wires are on that fuse, or being fed by that fuse, we can use an amp clamp and try to recreate this high current situation. So let's get our scope out. It's intermittent, so we want to see all the glitches we need an oscilloscope. Forget about your you know, regular meter, not gonna happen. Um, so let's get the amp clamp out and the Pico scope and go to that fuse box. All right, so like I said, I wrote down all the wires here, pinouts, wiring colors, and connector numbers on a sheet of paper, and we can locate them right here. So red with a white stripe, that's 53 engine solenoid, 49 is a red and a black. Right there, that's for the ignition coils. And then we have two more, 69, 55, white and black, white and blue. Those are all right here on this F10 connector. Odd man out, pin number 10 on E18, brown wire. Goes to the ECM. That is, uh, oh, where was that guy? This guy right here, pin two. Well, I guess pin 10 if you look at the uh, connector layout. Anyways, first thing, connect the amp clamp right to that fuse so we're monitoring all the wires and let's see how much current we can get this thing to draw right now. What? 
the heck, moose height. <laughs> Uh, let's see, get our Pico scope out. This tablet, if I don't shut the screen off and I close it, sometimes it starts doing weird stuff on its own. So I'm going to boot that up. We're going to start the car up. They say sometimes the fuse blows right away. Sometimes it happens when it's driving. So for now, we'll just rev up the car here in the parking lot and see what our current draw is on there. All right, we've got the scope rolling. And... We're going to set it to plus or minus 2 volts, and 1 volt is 10 amps, so that should be enough, uh, enough screen here to catch the, uh, catch the glitch. So let's start the engine up. And that sound is a belt that's about to jump off, but they're not worried about it. So let's pause that for now. And right now we're hitting about 12 amps. And those look like ignition current ramps. Okay. Uh, that's because the ignition coils are on the circuit. Makes sense, right? But I'm not seeing anything excessive. Let's rev it up. Seeing some spikes there. Oh, the engine stalled out. I think we just recreated the fault. Look at this, it went over 20 amps. Right there. So, <laughs> so it's even off the scale for the amp clamp. And it just blew the fuse, so we're on the right track. We have to figure out what caused this event? Now we can see some some other you know that's about 20 amps but right here it really was not happy. So let's use some logical reasoning. Um, now we have to put the amp clamp around individual wires and see if we can catch this you know 20 amp draw. Uh, the ignition coils look fine I'm not worried about that circuit but we have like you know four or five other ones so let's uh, replace that fuse in my jumper and try again. All right, so basically we have one, two, three, four, five circuits on this fuse. Ignition coils, we saw the ramps, they looked fine. There's something else that's causing you know, a high current draw for, for some amount of time to blow that fuse. So we have one, two, three, four wires left. Gut feeling. <laughs> engine solenoid. So, electrically controlled engine mount. I know in the 90s, Nissan even had like a TSB where these solenoids would short out and they cook the computer because they are computer controlled. We can see that on a wiring diagram. How this thing is, it's just a, you know, two wire solenoid. I don't know what it's supposed to do, probably make your ride smoother. But when it leads to stalling, I don't think uh, the driver cares about a smooth ride anymore. So this is the engine control module, and here it is. Electric, electronic controlled engine mount control solenoid valve. How about that? Feed, ground side switched. So basically, what we can do is grab just the wire that controls that solenoid, this red and white, 1053, F10, and see if we can uh, see that current draw just on that one wire. If we do, we can condemn the solenoid. If we don't, we'll chase the other ones. Well, sure enough, we blew my 20 amp fuse little jumper. So I have that replaced. And now we just want to focus on this red with a white stripe wire going down to that electrically controlled solenoid control valve, whatever they call it. So, re-zero the amp clamp, and try again. Hopefully this is the one. Okay. 
Back to our Pico. Okay, so we're on. Start the car up. Ah, see some spikes already. Let's rev up the engine. There it is. That is definitely our high current event. I can make the car stall out again. There it goes. We got it. Yep, it blew my fuse. <laughs> Blew it. Oh yeah. Huh? Yep. And I can see the uh, the current right here. We reached over 20 amps. So that's it. Blew my 20 amp fuse right there, going on that red and white wire to the engine mount. So confirmed diagnosis. Now the fix for this is just unplug the damn thing because the risk here is you're gonna sh cook your engine computer. And these engine mounts, I mean, they're still hold the engine up. I don't know if you can feel a difference with it plugged in or unplugged, so let's go to the solenoid, unplug it, and make sure that um, that's the issue. So that's it, we gotta lift the car up, find this uh, control solenoid valve. You gonna shot him? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Uh, Quick it. fix here. That's it. We're going to tape this up so it doesn't short out. Okay. And then we're going to do the same test with the current clamp and make sure that this car does not stall anymore. Alright, so we cut the wire for the solenoid. I'm back on the 42 amp fuse. Run the scope. Start up the car. So that's just the ignition coil ramps. Rub it up. That's it. Fixed. What? <laughs> Fixed. Done. Oh yeah. It doesn't go above 12 amps now. That's just the ignition coils firing. That's normal. Okay. So but, uh, we uh, check engine, right? Let's uh, scan for codes real quick. Check engine light is not on. I don't know if this thing would set a code for it. I think it would. Solenoid. Uh, Oh, let's see here. What do we do? 7884 exhaust valve T management RTDR bank one, bank two. Well, we might have been a little hasty here. Something else might be in that circuit. These exhaust um, variable valve timing, maybe it was. Hmm. We might have to actually disconnect the, at the solenoid instead of cutting a wire, but it proves the point that our excessive current draw is gone and I think that's it. Alright guys, I think we jumped the gun there a little bit. When it said engine solenoid, I assumed it was just the engine mount, control solenoid. That doesn't seem to be the case because now we're setting codes for, you know, <laughs> the cam actuator solenoids. So we have to do more research on these wiring diagrams which are not the easiest to follow. I'll tell you that right now. I actually went to all data because they have these diagrams uh, more organized. So we have to trace exactly what this fuse feeds, not just assume what, you know what the labels mean. So in any case, we're worried about fuse 42, right? Comes over here, ECM relay. And these pins here, 69, 70, 54. I wish they, you can zoom in on these diagrams. If you click zoom, it's kind of a pain, but sometimes that's what you have to go through. So that's a throttle control relay, but the ECM relay, uh, you know, the load side of that feeds the control side of the throttle. We're not worried about that. We're worried about 53. We saw the current on the red and white wire. Okay? So, pin 53 from... Um, let's see, was it pin 53 now? 
Oh, jeez. Let's go back to our original diagram where we got sidetracked. Okay, 53. Right? 53 was our red and white engine solenoid wire. That's the one we're worried about. Let's just look at that tree and try to get this thing done. L. So we go through next diagram on L. JKL. L comes over here. Across, across, across to. See, sometimes you just can't make that. Make the little arrows out. So you go zoom. Go to the zoom one. It is BB, Bob, Bob. So let's keep going. Next one. That is BB right there. And it comes straight across. Again, we have to be 100% here. We're already uh, kind of wasted a little time. <sighs> Let's zoom this guy. Okay, BB comes across to HH. So you see now why these diagrams are a little frustrating, but still better than European diagrams. I think that's HH, but we still can't can't be 100% before zooming in. There's HH. It goes across to KK, I think. Whatever that is. So next diagram. HH to. I think that's KK right there. And finally, zoom in on that. KK comes to intake valve timing control, intake control, vias control solenoid, and exhaust valve timing control magnet. Okay. Hmm. That kind of blows. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven solenoids in this, including EVAP, canister, vent control valve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven solenoids in there. So now we have to see which solenoid this current is going to. That sucks. Uh, time for an amp clamp, or we can unplug one by one and see, you know, see which one it is. So that there are the connectors of 67, 66, 63, 65, 32, and 33. All right, now that we're on the right track, on the right wire. Started in uh, Revit. Uh, just a sec. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven solenoids on here. We'll unplug the easy ones and see if our current draw goes away. So we unplugged these two guys here, which are VIAS control solenoid one and two. Then I unplugged one and two. That's the intake. Um, that's exhaust. the exhaust exhaust cam actuators, right? The, these two guys here. And then we got two more, which are harder to get to, which I did not unplug yet, down there on the intake cams. And then the vent control valve, it's under the car. We'll leave that for last. So we got the Pico hooked up. Zero our amp clamp. And let's see if the current draw is still there. So I'm gonna start it up and just rev, rev it up. Yep. We'll see if it spikes. Spike the current again. Oh, wait up. Get it off. 
We just blew a 25 amp fuse on key on. <laughs> we didn't even get to start it. Wow. So what sh what caused this right here? It's a 20 looks like 20 amps at least plus something else. So it was not one of these ones that we unplugged. So let's keep unplugging them. Down there, down there. I should probably set reset my scale here to plus or minus five so we can see you know the whole scale. Let's see. Okay, good. Now we'll need another fuse and I guess I'll uh, unplug these intake solenoids. Alright, I got the front bank intake cam unplugged. We're still on our wire. Key on. Uh, just a sec. Ready? And ready, yep. Yep, shut it off. I did it again. Alright, got the last intake solenoid unplugged. So, with the key on, this thing is either gonna blow or not. So I'm gonna hook this guy up here. We're just on that red and white wire. See what happens on the scope. And boom. I just blew it. Gotta go for this vent solenoid now. Alright, moment of truth. I unplugged the vent solenoid, plug in our Pico, turn the key on, see if this fuse blows. You want me to do it? Yep, let me just uh, get hooked up here real quick. All right, here we go. Go for it. Oh, we should probably uh, replace the fuse first here. Huh? Here, turn it off. Yeah, turn it off. All right, fuse is in. Let's do it. Wait up, wait. All right, try again. Beautiful. Yeah, rev it up, rev it up. Oh, stop. Uh, yep. It, uh... It blew? It, it, it fucking blew. Wow. We got fucking problem with that car, man. Unbelievable. So I, I, I plugged all those back in. Wait, it didn't blow when you turned the key on this no. time. Oh, man. So let's see. All right, so... It's just a short to ground, it has nothing to do with the solenoids, but however, unplugging this guy did make a difference. We're gonna use a long screwdriver. It didn't just, make a difference, just, maybe it's short it out. Well, if we bump the harness, look at our test light. There it is, short to ground okay. on that wire. So we blew a few fuses, but end of the day, car's gonna be fixed. And that belt is going on and off, so he could have slid in right into the harness and, exactly. and shorted something out. Yep, you're absolutely right. All right. So, super tough camera shot here. If we look through the gap, I can feel it with my hand. Move this hose out of the way. Oh man, this is gonna be tough. See, so I got light, camera, and action. <laughs> so there's my, there's the finger back there. You guys see the wires? Right there, kind of wiggling them. So they're rubbing on a sharp metal bracket, and I think whatever caused that belt to slip off could have just catch it. The uh, the harness just got pulled in and rubbed on the metal bracket, shorted out that power wire. So I feel a little uh, I don't know, not not defeated, but we should have it shouldn't have taken this long. We're uh, we're short to ground. But right now I positioned it so it's uh, away from the bracket and we can check that with our test light. If these lights don't light, then we have no short. Oh. What? Oh, okay. That's... I just want to make sure we don't have a short to short to ground here. Yeah, that should be, should be good. So once you reconnect that wire... So if we put it on here... So we're interested in, if the, is the current going through that wire oh, okay. to the harness? Yeah. 
So once you put in the fuse, reconnect that wire. I'm gonna reconnect this. We'll be good to go until the belt snags the harness again. So that's the real problem. And the car was trying to tell us that because it was making crazy noises and we kind of ignored it. Yeah. Wow. And I knew I knew 